Well, morning all, and a very warm welcome back to the channel, Motomi Adventures. It's good to have you along as always. We had, when we did, a, uh, an episode about VB suspension. We had uh, one or two questions and messages uh, from those who were interested in the product from a smaller vehicle, a camper van point of view, um, be it for perhaps up waiting purposes or be it just for more of a comfort or uh, perhaps for on or off road um, so enabling so to enable us to answer that uh, I spoke to our good friends at A&E Leisure uh, James and Nathan and uh, they uh, they said a why don't you come on up and have a look at us fitting to a camper van and B, uh, yes, it does make a big difference and uh, makes a difference in a number of ways, which we can obviously show you when you come up and see us. So, needless to say, welcome to another edition of Motorhome Mods. We are uh, back at A&E Leisure and we're about to see some VB suspension added to a T6 VW camper van. Without further ado, guys, let's get into the garage. I'm sure um, Aaron will be pleased to see us again. <laughs> <laughs> pestering him, pestering him with my camera as he uh, as he uh, beavers away under this VW T6. Um, but nonetheless, let's get in the garage and uh, have a look at this modification. Uh, thanks, as always, uh, to A&E Leisure for the invitation to come up, but uh, but also, of course, to Aaron for putting up with me uh, in his garage uh, while he works. Now, a &E Leisure, for those of you who are new to the channel, um, look after anything and everything caravan and motorhome related. Uh, you name it, they've got a shelf full of goodies. Um, of course, we're here for VB suspension work, but as you can see there, EP levelling, uh, do HY, full levelling as well. Um, any amendments and alterations to your van, hab checks, uh, you name it really, the list is almost endless. Check out their website at A&E Leisure. They're in Northwich in Cheshire. And um, if you bring your motorhome or caravan here for work, it might well end up in one of these workshops um, here at the yard where they have a number of industrial units which, uh, which look after everything that I've described. They've also got a really nice, nicely equipped and kitted out shop here. Um, they've also got, if I just show you out the door here, you can see the first of many an awning, which uh, there's one or two on the outside, but then there's next to me here in this building next door, the unit next door, there is, uh, there is yet more um, in their shop, uh, a huge internal layout of awnings and the like um, in, what, in a unit which is sort of twice the size of this. So um, if you're in the area, and particularly on a grey and yucky day when you're thinking about next year's holiday then do pop in and have a look at what they've got to offer and of course if you need any work done on your motorhome or caravan to get it ready for next year's travel then uh, then a and &E Leisure ring uh, James or Nathan here and I'm sure they'll be able to provide you with a quotation for work uh, that you need. Anyway we are looking for our T6 it's over there bright and early on a Monday morning been dropped off so we're just going to get it into the workshop here and get going on the uh, VB suspension and of course as a reminder we're not um, we're not a paid promotion for A&E Leisure um, we are uh, and I am merely a, a very interested party as a motorhome owner obviously of uh, of our motorhome the front of which you can just see there um, very much um, keen on coming to see what they do to particularly motorhomes because uh, it always gives you an idea doesn't it for the next modification um, but also uh, as a result of some of the interaction with you uh, with you folk on the channel which has been amazing um, and some of the questions we get asked that's what brought us back here today um, to have a look at uh, a smaller vehicle the t6 vw t6 getting its vb suspension so hopefully you'll get a, a sort of objective view of um, of what's going on here today so here it is VW T6 that's uh, gonna have an early Christmas present just got in on the ramp and straight away um, Aaron is just fitting some tape 
on the sides here because part of, as you can imagine with some of the kitten uh, within the full VB suspension system, um, there's a fair bit to get on the vehicle. If you haven't seen um, on the channel, there's a film for a motorhome having full VB air suspension on it. A bigger vehicle, seven, I think that was a seven and a half meter one that we uh, filmed a few, couple of months ago. Um, so check out the channel for that, but um, as you'll know from if you've seen that one, there's a fair bit of kit and equipment to fit on a vehicle, and therefore part of this process is the front bumper's got to come off, so Aaron's just um, protecting the surfaces because when the bumper, which separates there, comes away, and particularly when it goes back on the vehicle, you have to, because of the way you have to position it, sort of almost go past that bit and then come back in to slot it into place. It uh, means that just to be on the safe side they protect the surfaces that are going to be closest to that process particularly of when this gets put back after the system is in up and running so that's the first bit to note some good um, some good uh, early protection going in for those surfaces that may be exposed to the possibility of uh, damage good to see and vb who make these products um this product that will be going on over the course of the next uh, couple of three days is um, specifically designed for smaller vehicles. Um, so the one we, that we uh, watched and filmed being fitted to the motorhome a couple of months ago, that will be a very slightly different kit than the one that will be going on this one today. Um, and the functionality or the difference in the kit is often down to the shape of um, the piston that um, that is part of the piston process, the air suspension that we'll be fitting to the vehicle and I'll explain a bit more about that difference as the film goes on and particularly when I've got um, got one of the pistons in sight so I can actually sort of show you um, or describe to you the slight differences in the piston shape which gives, um, which adds potential functionality to uh, the VB system for this vehicle. So. Um, in relation to perhaps sport mode or some of the other modes that we'll talk about as we go. Um, so yeah, more about that a bit later. You'll remember that the uh, compressor on the, on the motorhomes we film goes under the uh, under the side stack of the vehicle, but um, but of course no space for that here. So behind the bumper goes the compressor for for this particular T6. So looking forward to seeing this installed and how they, uh, how they magically make everything disappear. So, so here we go, there's our rear, rear pistons, laying kit out and equipment, wiring looms over here on the workshop, got the um, little compressor there that we know is gonna disappear behind the bumper, the wiring looms, and then Aaron's just sorting out the, um, some of the component parts here, in fact that looks like, yeah that's one of the um, ride height sensors which, um, which you set the, um, which the system memorises. Once everything's in you set it to ride height and that's the position that it defaults to um, by means of this, these sensors on each, uh, each wheel. There's some stuff there isn't there eh? Nuts and bolts, new kit. Some, some gooey stuff thrown into the mix as well. We've got the lot. Rather our than me, putting it all on. Oh, and there's our air tank there as well. So a lot of bits and bobs to, um, to wheedle into this T6. So the T6 up on the ramp. Got to get to the front struts and coil springs there because as we know they're going to be completely replaced incidentally that um, on a completely unrelated matter on the side of the uh, tire there you can see this little symbol this little symbol here the um, the mountain symbol that's um, that's a symbol if you're tending to travel um, to some of the alpine areas or high mountain areas in Europe. You need that symbol on your tyre 
um, to be able to travel into some of the zones where, um, where after October the 31st and up until March the 31st, you have to have either snow socks, snow chains, or you have to have tires with that symbol on that mountain symbol. And these in fact are Michelin uh, cross climate. So any of you thinking of heading for the Alps in those months, November through to March, then uh, uh, either take snow socks, snow chains, or you can fit four of these amazing cross climate tires. I'm just about to change my front two, which are due for replacement. I'm gonna swap them to cross climates as well. Just saves you having to have a second set of wheels and tires to put on within those months. That's the magic symbol. Anyway, I digress. Um, and then at the back here, then that's where all these, the coil springs at the back here will be replaced by the uh, airbags. Fair bit of work to come. And this fabulous little T6. So first job, shock absorber is out. Aaron started work on the near side rear. So the shock absorber on the other side is uh, gone. And then uh, the coil spring will be the next out for dismantling. Yeah. There we go. That's the next phase. The uh, coil spring is out from the, uh, from the rear near side here. And Aaron's just starting to take off various bits and pieces on the rear offside to, um, to do similar over the other side. So part of the process um, of taking this coil spring off and then part of the process as well is cutting this piece down to size so it fits. You can just see the end there. So it fits into the end of that. So we've got to trim off most of it, but leave sort of 20 odd mil ready for the new, uh, the new airbag fitting. Uh, this piece here, you see this bit is where the spring, the bottom end of the uh, coil spring sat, which is going to be replaced by our, um, by our airbag. And then when it comes to fitting it into the space there, this, uh, this is the top end. And as you can see there, no screw holes at all. It is merely with some of that gooey stuff, seriously gooey glue that they've supplied, it gets stuck on to the underside there, uh, to the underside of the uh, T6. And today's Bible is, gosh, yeah, mid fifties, 50 odd pages to get yourself through. If you fancy doing it yourself, I know what my answer would be. So that's the uh, offside spring out. You can see the longer piece here that's yet to be cut down, ready for the uh, the new airbag. And of course, the super important spring compressors, which, uh, which allow Aaron to get those out a little bit easier. Definitely need one of those. So it just needs about uh, the book says 9 to 11 millimetres left once that piece has been cut off at the top of the coil spring. So Aaron's just finishing off the uh, offside cut. So that's both the, uh, both the excess bits cut off and now this is the next bit that's gone on. That is, um, it's a two-fold thing. It's a ride height sensor. Um, for the new VB system, but it's also on there got the old headlight sensor for headlight level. So um, VB supply a new piece of kit that therefore allows both the new and the old sensor to be fitted. And we'll probably see if we have a look at this front side. I should be able to see the other one. Yeah, there we go. There's another sensor there at the front yet to be changed, obviously carrying out the same similar function and that of course gets fitted on with a with a stack of new um new nuts and bolts that bags of which are supplied by um by vb to replace any of the bolts so 
it's a good and also A and E here. Also, um, over the years that they've been uh, working on these vehicles, working on with VB, uh, they've established that sometimes parts that they remove um, or unscrew or unbolt on um, certain vehicles uh, can. Um, because of just the way the parts are made and engineered can make uh, uh, make or damage those particular pieces uh, or need bolt replacement and things like that that aren't supplied within the VB kit. So Aaron and the team here at A&E pre-order uh, those bolts or those fixings so that when the vehicle goes back together again you don't get follow-on issues be it from connections to anti-roll bars or or various other aspects of the suspension or wheels that um, that they're refitting or fitting back on so it avoids those problems um, once the vehicle has left the garage after the work so again that's good and of course only experience can tell you which bits are more susceptible to that um, and which bits therefore that the team here order in in anticipation of uh, putting new ones on to avoid those problems. And that's the uh, sensors just going into the near side as well there. Just uh, up, it's just there, that's the new, uh, the new ride height sensor. And then after the sensor goes in, the first Bit of the wiring loom is uh, is popped in there before the other things start to go back together again. So there we go. There's the sensors fitted back in. That's our ride height sensors. On the near side, it's just the ride height, and then the off side, it's the ride height coupled with the um, coupled with the headlight sensor. So, next job is to prepare the upper surface of the um, airbag ready for sticking with a tube supplied by VB, which is an incredibly powerful metal bonding glue. And that's getting all the surfaces done, cleaned up under there with um, suitable cleaner to get the bodywork sorted. And now we're just doing the other surface as well before applying the uh, the adhesive what? so there we go there's the first as the near side airbag in see the airline in the corner there which is um, often into the vehicle that way and then uh, they're all colour coded incidentally so where you've got the left and right they differentiate so you can make sure you get them on the right side and then the uh, so the adhesive is used on this piece up here and then down here there's some extra drilling to make some holes bigger that are already exist in the chassis member here and um, ready for this bit to then slot over roughly where the coil spring was sat as well that's now inside there underneath and that's the first of it going in and there's the uh, offside one getting its seriously gloopy glue added ready to be and there we go there's the um, so that was on the for the previous coil spring fit so the new one um, the bottom half of it fits over that bit and then there's a couple of holes here um, and it's this one here that needs uh, drilling out and oversizing ready for the fixings later on there we go there's the sec second one ready to go So once it's um, once they've been glued, then now um, the van is raised or the suspension is raised back up again. So and there's about one one and a half bar in that, which provides the upward pressure onto the glued surface, and that's now left overnight probably um, on the rear end here, left and now really set absolutely solid. Same on the 
Same on the near side there, so that it's really pushing that new adhesive into place for a rock solid finish on that. And then there's our customary red dye to denote that they've been checked and talked. Ready to go. Next piece in is the plate, the supporting plate for the um, air tank, compressor air tank, uh, because that fits in this right at the back here and this rear near side quarter. And then over the other side, Aaron's just fitting in as a heat shield here that goes, uh, that gets fitted on, that just protects the bag a little bit there. So the uh, air tank is in. Fitted there right at the back rear near side. In the perfect spot for it. Not a great deal of room under the T6, but there is a perfect little spot for the air tank just there. There is an option as well for it to go the other side, but um, but this is definitely on this particular one, this is the best spot. And they also show in the manual that there's sometimes a plastic cowl here which you can cut the back of to make sure this fits in. So there's obviously a number of different T6 or a number of different VW models that this kit will fit. And um, But it's gone in pretty straightforwardly on this one with the bracket in at the back there and then the tank fitted. And Aaron has also temporarily put these ones on, which are obviously, as you can tell, not standard, um, not standard shocks, of course, because they are um, the calibration shock equivalent. So these are fitted first. And this piece here is um, adjustable. There's two different marks for it and this is for a standard standard calibration there is an option to have it calibrated um, so that it goes another 30 mil higher and that would be then setting the uh, setting the calibration tool back there but these are specific calibration tools that are fitted um, as part of the uh, installation process and in fact on the back wall here <laughs> You can see a stack of different, these are all various types of calibration tools that A&E have here. Um, all of which have their own specific purposes to set heights, set measurements, to do with the levelling systems, to do with the hydraulics. Um, so again, if it was something you were thinking of doing at home, you need to be able to access this sort of kit and equipment to be able to get everything set up. Um, when you then get the laptop out at the end and start to calibrate, it needs those specific specific settings that these uh, that these tools provide. So while we're on the subject of calibration, that difference in height would be one of the choices that you could have for your um, for your VW uh, T6. But also, um, there are therefore some options for you to choose, and A and E Leisure here would take you through all the different options that are available for your particular model of VW. Um, and for example, if you had a standard chassis um, uh, or a maxi chassis, then the difference for this particular kit might be a hundred or so pounds. Um, if you were to, to be fitting it to a maxi as opposed to a standard chassis. So there are some little variations. There's also variations in some of the software required, in some of the other parts required, depending on which chassis or, and which options you go for in terms of your full VB Air kit. Um, and that may amount to a few hundred pounds difference in the overall price. Um, and while we're talking about price, it's um, we're in the region of just over 6K for a full VB Air system on a VW T6 um, as a ballpark figure. But obviously James, Nathan and the team here at A&E would be able to take you through all those different options um, if, you, if it was the full VB uh, suspension that you were going for, as this one is. Um, he'd be able to take you through all those options and explain the variations and the additions or deductions that might be um, in and around that price that I've mentioned. Um, so a significant investment, but, um, but also an incredible system which provides um, an awful lot of benefits to, um, to
to the drive and to your T6. And another variation and another thing that only you need to know is how your front struts are set up because the way these brackets fit um, it depends on how your current vehicle front struts are. Um, for example on the Maxi chassis they may be different to the standard chassis so these are all things that um, form part of the uh, consultation and planning process if, you, uh, if you're choosing the full VBR system for your T6 and things that and information that you'll need to supply to A&E here to help them choose and select the right kit for your vehicle. Uh, incidentally I'll just pop a picture on the screen there which just shows you perhaps the difference in the way the struts are fitted um, which are one of the determining factors when they order your full VBA kit into, the, into here at A&E ready for your installation. You can see there the difference, the slight difference in the way on the standard and on the maxi chassis that the, uh, that the front strut is fitted and that then determines what's ordered for you. Um, what Aaron, Aaron has also been doing um, is starting to add some conduiting to protect those um, air lines and get them ready and also take off a lot of these underside and loosen off a lot of these underside trays here too um, to then get ready to take the cable runs up towards what would eventually be the control panel up at the front inside the vehicle there. Um, and also of course take the airlines to the where the main compressor will be which we know is going to be behind the uh, front bumper um, fitted in it fits in about sort of in this area here um, so obviously the airlines are first and foremost got to make their way all the way up to to that point for both front and rear um, front and rear wheels and so Aaron is just starting to um, to loosen off all the relevant bolts there, protecting the edges there with the tape, as I've said earlier at the beginning of the film, and now starting to take off the front bumper, which allows then a lot of the rest of the system to be fitted, and the first bit indeed that, um, that needs to be done to be able to then start to think about the compressor fitting, and of course the replacement of the current, um, the current suspension system uh, at the front of the T6. So, bumper is off. There's a gazillion screws all the way around the edge. Some clips across the front. There's uh, plugs to unplug. It's a right maze of bits and pieces to be able to get it off onto the stand there. So, next job is offer up the compressor. There we go, the compressor unit up into this area. If I come back a bit in that front off side of the bumper so you can see what a tight fit everything is but nonetheless made to squeeze into these little gaps you've got all the existing pipe work to avoid you've got the horn to take off um, indeed there's dual dual horn units there you have to unplug one take a bracket off that connects it which then allows and take some other um, some other clips out on there which then allows you to offer the whole compressor unit up into the onto this um, this chassis member here which has got some holes that you utilize so what a complicated what a squish so it's time to start tracking all the airline into the various nooks and crannies that it needs to follow to take the airlines from the back to the front of the compressor here and then uh, Tucking it all away under the under the underside panels. A fair labyrinth, a labyrinth of pipes, and then of course the wiring loom itself has got to be tracked back through the right voids and spaces so that it all comes back to the cab area where the remote control will be and the battery connections. It is a real, uh, a real puzzle to get it all fitted in. Rather Aaron than me, I have to say. There's this, uh, there's all the cable run there. 
all being protected with conduit. It's all coming in behind the heat shielding, so make sure that it sits out the way of any heat sources. All neatly, neatly tucked away. So there is an example of a piece that is not part of the VB kit, but that is a very difficult part to remove, the old one. And so this, bought in advance, is a new one in the anticipation that the problems that they have had getting the uh, original part off there is, uh, is as before and it's needed to be cut out because the bolt, the whole bolt mechanism of this ball joint is virtually impossible to back off once it's fitted in there. So, so new one ready and waiting, old one now being cut out and removed. One of those good examples of forward planning. A bit of light in that. That's the, uh, that's the piece that links it down into here that needed cutting out. And uh, that's just obviously start to prep to take out the uh, coil spring. Ready for, uh, ready for our new airbag to be fitted in its place. But then there's various bits that have got to be taken off under the bonnet as well to access the top of the strut to be able to then drop the whole thing out. So Aaron's starting the dismantle of things that have to be removed to allow you to access the top, which includes the, the wiper blades and various other bits below it in the, uh, in the under bonnet area. No wonder it takes, uh, takes such a long time. We're into day two now and um, you can definitely see why it needs a fair few labour hours to get in and around as you can get a flavour of just from this film and that's with the power of edit let alone the actual time that it takes to do some of these tasks so there's the front near side strut is now out ready for the new one in and what a job that was Nothing is a swift job taking these apart. So that's the new uh, airbag now being offered up. Aaron up the top end there, uh, just getting the nut on the fixture at the top. He'll need good. So that's the uh, the new strut fixed in, a couple of new bolts there, and then just at the back there, you can see here that's the uh, that's the height sensor that's just gone in that fits down further down there, and that's the thing that um, connects all four wheels and gets them all to the ride height as the default point, and then from there to your off-road mode and to your car park mode. I'll explain a bit more about the modes when we get to the uh, remote control part. So there we go, that's the uh, top end of it down there of the strut. And that one's just about complete now over this side. I've got the um, calibration spacers being put in there as well, ready for that time where it all gets hooked up to the laptop wheels back on you can see the uh, new airbag in there and then some of the um, some of the air piping is coming around the front here and then going off along the uh, front of the T6 back towards the compressor so the offside wheels off then the um, the link there let's just get a bit of light in there the uh, anti-roll bar link, that's again uh, the problematic one that needs uh, cutting off and then replacing with a new one. So that's already 
in the workshop having been pre-ordered and <laughs> ready for the ready for the challenge that it is and now uh, Aaron's just up top there loosening off the top nut to uh, start to get the offside strut and spring out spring spring compressors just going in so that, um, get some compression in it to enable it to come out a little bit easier just fitting the um, emergency valve system which he's got ready um, some of the pipes there ready and wrapped to go down uh, and around the engine bay and back down to the compressor and that's um, that's the um, ability to be able to manually inflate if you get any uh, system malfunction it's a way to manually therefore inflate the uh, airbags without um, uh, without, uh, if you lose power or similar, so that you can literally just pump them up with an air pump if the system for any reason malfunctions. But of course to get to anything up there, including the um, fitting of the nuts on the top end of the struts, um, then yet more pieces have to come off. Front grille there and the wipers and everything all has to be disassembled. and. Uh, set aside whilst which gives you access to everything up there that Aaron's working on so that's the second strut and spring coming out Those are the uh, emergency valves as well that uh, Aaron was fitting earlier. And there you can see you just got a standard type car valve which allows manual inflation if the system can't be done through the normal way. And then obviously down in there, let's get a bit of light in there. Down in there you can just see the top end of the uh, Top end of the strut coming through there. <coughs> and then this will be routed around the engine bay, which we'll see in a minute. That's all the um, grill and the wipers that were removed to, uh, to allow access into some of these areas. There's that, uh, there's the new link arm gone in there that uh, has traditionally called them lots of, uh, caused them lots of grief here. So brand new ones in, ordered in advance and done. Next job will be the um, height sensor into here, which um, the offside shares it with the uh, headlight sensor. So a bit similar to when we had the rear offside off on that side for the headlight sensor as well. So there we go, there's the height sensor. This is the height sensor. Um, but this one here, this is the headlight sensor. And the bracket here, this new, this is a whole new bracket. So the old one basically, the old bracket that that fits to on the bottom here on the swing arm, that gets taken out, the fitting gets taken off and put onto this new one and, uh, and generally that's a complete change then so for some reason the headlamp sensors are only on the off side, rear and front off side, there's nothing on the near side so that's why this side is slightly different but that's all gone in pretty well there and there you can just see as well while we're around here you can just see at the bottom there that's the the new strut that comes right down here with its new bolts in. So Aaron's just uh, 
putting in the auto leveler, which is uh, basically a sensor that goes on a surface on the underside there and allows the system to then work out where its, uh, where its um, ride height is and all the calibrations are set to that. So wheel back on, everything fitted in around there and then just a little bit of scrambled egg to sort out and the wiring and then it's um, and then it's uh, we'll be starting to put it all back together again ready for uh, test and calibration now while we're just uh, waiting for Aaron to sort out some wires in there I mentioned um, that I was going to talk about the piston now on the VB uh, full air for the T6 particularly, it's got a sort of unique feature in that it has a sport mode. Now, when you go into sport mode, it starts to lower the airbag down. So the lower the bag sort of comes down to this next level in the piston. And because it comes down to that level, it therefore increases the surface area of, of um, the piston piece at the bottom. And therefore, as the pressure uh, as it goes over that wider piece, it therefore increases the air pressure in the bag because there's more surface area now pushing into the air space above it. So uh, that's what enables it to achieve then this sport mode. So the whole thing sits lower, but because it goes over the larger surfaced area piston, it actually, uh, or insert at the bottom of the bag there, it actually increases the pressure, which I know is a bit counterintuitive, but when you actually start to, to think about the process, it does sort of make sense. Um, so a relatively small decrease in air pressure, but a bigger increase in volume of what's inside means that the pressure will actually increase. So hence, sport mode, lower vehicle, harder ride, and, you know, less... Uh, uh, even less roll or whatever that you may normally get so hence you that feeling of sport mode unique to the unique to VB's full air for the T6 there and um, and an interesting feature apart from the other modes that uh, the other modes that I've talked about which obviously is the um, is the sort of right up to the 4x4 mode at the top height and perhaps down right down to car park mode at the bottom height some interesting uh, interesting features on this little T6 VB full air system and there, of course, are those variations as well in terms of what you add to it. You may add the emergency feature, which is those extra valves in the bonnet we've got there. That's an optional extra. You may add the auto leveling function. You know, that's an optional extra. So the price you see on A&E's website is obviously the system fitted for you. But then, of course, as I said, from that 6.1 stroke 6.2 area of cost, um, including that there, um, you can then add those extra bits on, which might take the price up to sort of 7K even, perhaps slightly more depending on all those extras that you add. Um, and of course there are slight variations in the T66 and the 6.1 and ways the wiring goes and, and um, different fits. So, but those are the sort of regions of the price. The lower sixes is your sort of start point. And then depending on some of those extra options that you've got, and or if you opt into we'll get you to your sort of final fully fitted all-inclusive price but obviously James and uh, Nathan and the team here at A&E will uh, talk you through those depending on which um, which VW you have talk you through all those optional extras you know and you can then decide which version you're going to go for but there's one thing for sure having again now watched yet another fit here at uh, A&E that um, the time and effort to plan the whole install to ensure there's enough time to do it without any rushing or corners being cut is clearly evident here um, as, uh, as we've obviously been here throughout uh, every, every minute of the installation so I've sort of seen it in action and uh, in progress a really thorough and uh, very well put together and very well installed kit then in terms of the wiring inside, there's sort of two or three pickups that it has to take from the ignition, from the handbrake, and needs a speed sensor input. So there are various options, um, depending again on which model of VW T6 it is, the 6, the 6.1, um, and or any other variation. Um, 
depends on first and foremost what's sitting down here um, what you have um, and depending on the model if the plug configuration is different then you have to go in a different place in the vehicle potentially behind the speedo so again it's um, when you finish with the uh, when you finish with the the heavy duty stuff on the wheels and um, getting the airbags on then uh, is even more head scratching stuff that comes when you then have to start taking off the um, taking off the seats to access the fuse and the wiring and decide um, how that's going in so yeah definitely definitely would give me a very very big headache but not here at A&E which now I've come around the other side as well I'll show you all the bits and pieces they've got to come off um, B pillar cover as well will be coming off there just um, it is an absolute absolute um, plethora of a spaghetti junction of wires and wire routes but of course when it's finished all you get is probably somewhere here or wherever it's um, wherever the um, the owner has decided to put it is the lead with the remote control on the end that's all that will be visible so it's definitely worth all of this uh, all of this hard work to route everything as invisibly as possible so there we go if you've never seen the back of a t6 dashboard clock speedo then there you go so you've got to go deep deep into the dashboard to um that's the speed sensor one that's going on there lots of digging so home straight now the front bumper being refitted in with a million different screws that came out in the first place and uh, all the associated wiring and the sensors that need to be rewired on the front end there which has all gone together, back together I should say, very well and now it's on to the calibration, the final setup telling the system where level is and all the associated cross checks and then the final test being run on the suspension and then sport the, mode just watch the vehicle here as it lowers, it gives you an idea when it's dropping into sport mode there it obviously goes right down to uh, car park mode and then all the way back up to that off-road or 4x4 yeah. four four mode. So some huge functionality on this um, full VB system. Just the road test to go. Well, I hope that answered... Uh those of you who've uh, popped those questions in, thanks for the questions indeed. I hope that's answered the questions. Um, and that was actually an interesting install. Incredible how they, uh, VB have designed that kit to uh, fit um, basically every square square inch that's left over of the, uh, of the T6 there, the T6 California in the case of this particular uh, vehicle that you saw there. So yeah, an interesting install. Um, hope it was of use to, to those of you who are thinking of having that done and of course you could do an awful lot worse than um, give a and &E, uh, the team at A&E a shout to have that work done um, once again you know their attention to detail is fantastic um, the install uh, was done with care and sort of accuracy and it's just as the work we've had done on this van by them it's just so good to see it uh, going in and every sort of bit of it going in that um, and the care that they take to make sure everything's done right so um, so yeah you know if you're thinking of having it done give um, James or Nathan or the team uh, here at A&E a shout and go through some of those options that we talked about on the film there if you wanted some of those extras added as well as the full VB full air as the vb full air i should say um thanks guys for um how, for coming along uh, for that install it's good as ever to have you along and um we will hopefully see you again very soon on the channel thanks for watching guys take care bye now